Hello and welcome to Rando Tech Info and today we're going to be talking about my weekend's experience with the T-Mobile G1, otherwise known by some as the HTC Dream. For those of you who don't know, the G1 is considered by most Android phone historians as the first commercially available Android smartphone. I made it through most of the weekend using the G1 as my phone and I definitely have some thoughts about it and keep in mind when I tell you it was my phone, I mean I had my SIM card in the sucker. It was my phone. So if the timing of this video seems a little bit random, that's understandable. Why review a phone from 2008 in 2021? Well, the reason is T-Mobile has recently announced it's going to, at the end of January of 2021, stop supporting phones on its network that don't use its voice over LTE. So pretty soon, this phone will no longer work on T-Mobile. So this kind of became a now or never situation. If I ever wanted to review this phone, I had to do it. Also, this is the first video I'm doing in a series of videos this month about the history of Android. So if you like this video and you want to see more, make sure you sub to the channel so you can catch the rest. So let me start off by saying that smartphones have come a long way since 2008. There were some parts about using this phone that were admittedly painful. That said, some things still worked amazingly well. First, let's have a look at the hardware. You have a 320 by 480 pixel, 3.2 inch display. To put that into modern day perspective, that is literally less than half of the size of the screen on my OnePlus 7T. It uses a, and I'm gonna look because I don't wanna mess this up, it uses a Qualcomm MSM 721A. I don't even know what the hell that is. It's got 192 megabytes of RAM, 256 megabytes of storage, although it does have an SD card slot, so it's got that going for it. It has a single 3.15 megapixel rear-facing camera, and when I say single, I mean single. There's no front-facing camera on this sucker. It's just the rear-facing camera, although it does also do video, and it actually has a designated camera button to open the camera app and start and stop filming and to take photos. So take that, Sony. Other physical buttons include the side volume rocker, a call button, a home button, a back button, and the end call slash power button. All things that have become kind of standard on other phones. The really unique thing about this phone is it has a full-fledged trackball. You can use it to scroll through and yes, even select from the apps on your home screen or in your app drawer. It's kind of cool, even though I totally understand why it didn't catch on. Now, if you're a skilled listener, you probably heard me say exterior buttons on this phone. That is because underneath the screen, like so many other phones of its day, it has a full physical keyboard. Now, I had phones back in the day that had physical keyboards and I loved them, so I was surprised at just how much trouble I had using this thing. Perhaps it was because the keyboards on the phones I had back then were bigger or perhaps my thumbs have gotten fatter, but it wasn't as much fun as I thought it would be although it was better than trying to type using the microscopic keyboard on the touchscreen. And yes, it is a touchscreen despite the keyboard and trackball trying to trick you into believing otherwise. Lastly, while the phone is a little bit on the fat side, it's roughly four and a half by two inch frame, still fit in my pocket just fine, and the removable back which allowed you to replace the battery was a great feature that phone makers should have never been allowed to move away from. So I do have to mention a couple things that were not so great about this phone even back in the day. First off, no headphone jack, so lest you think Apple was the first company to try to phase out the jack, it wasn't. There was no jack on this device. In addition, the port on this thing, the charging port, has a very weird shape. And I believe this was so HTC could kind of trick you into believing you had to buy their cords to charge the device. But as it turns out, you can charge it with a regular micro USB cable, so not actually a super big deal. Now, moving on to the UI, it's running Android 1.6, otherwise known as Donut. And while it doesn't quite measure up to modern day Android, it was actually surprisingly functional. There's a home screen, an app drawer, and some fairly robust options that can be found in the settings. I was able to connect to my home Wi-Fi, hook up some Bluetooth headphones, customize my volume levels for calls and media, set my ringtone, adjust screen brightness, and toggle off animations. Heck, I could even set up keyboard shortcuts for my apps. Good luck doing that with the 2021 flagship. Sadly, I was not able to access the Play Store or download a different browser to this phone so I could add any additional apps. However, a lot of the apps that are already on the device still worked, like the alarm clock, the MP3 player, the calculator, Gmail, and even Google Maps. 
So I was able to experience a little bit of that 2008 smartphone life, especially considering that the calling and texting functions on this phone still worked perfectly. Once I took my T-Mobile SIM card and put it into the G1 and created a new Google account, it wouldn't let me log in with my pre-existing one, it let me make and receive calls and texts with ease. Pretty amazing considering it had been over 12 years since this phone was released. Sadly, due to the plague, I was not able to roam about town and show off my retro tech the way I would have liked, but still, it was fun to live that life for at least a couple of days. So what are my final thoughts about the G1? I think back in the day, this really was a killer smartphone. It had a lot of features that we still use on smartphones today, as well as some features that we no longer even have, like a full physical keyboard and a removable battery. As for using it in 2021, I'm really glad I took the time to do it. It was kind of like getting into a little time capsule, going back to 2008 and living that smartphone life. And while I would never want to go back there permanently, it was neat to kind of experience it in the short term and for nothing else to understand just how far our little pocket computers have come and how well they keep us connected to the world, our family, and our friends. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.